Good morning, folks. We have a number of worthwhile items to hit today, including an apropos top story, given that the PDF of The Next End of the World is now available. We'll get there, but we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours brings a massive southern coronal hole into view. As solar wind and geomagnetism calm completely this morning, we await the next enhanced solar wind stream from one of those coronal holes. Top left, We've got the next sunspot area coming in. It crested the limb overnight and it is showing a clear sign that the sunspot cycle is still building towards a maximum. The active region is dominated this morning by only one sunspot, but it has itself a light bridge. That light line running through the dark umbra is one of the signals that the sunspots are developing more significant complexity. We're going to Beijing, where they've been dusted out. Worst dust storm in at least a decade to hit the area arrived during yesterday's rush hour. Folks, you may be hearing a lot about 2.5 micron particulates, often shortened to PM 2.5. They are doubling their news coverage every year, so let's go see how you find the abundances at earth.nullschool.net. You click the Earth button bottom left to pull up the menu. You will want the particulates overlay up there, and then it should auto default to PM 2.5. But you also have the smaller and larger particulates on there, and this is also a great resource for other atmospheric chemistry looks as well. Remember, that's earth.nullschool.net. Up next, oof, looks like earthquake early warning systems based on hopefully alerting people of an imminent shake as its rupture begins, giving them a few extra seconds to do something, is not going to work in Cascadia. Sadly, they will need some other way to tell when it's about to go. Not at all related, we've got confirmation of two of our three main earthquake location forecasting points hit in one paper, outgoing longwave radiation and total electron content with which we use the global electric circuit. And it's about the thousandth confirmation in the last few years. We're jumping out to space next and looking at hot, rocky exoplanets. Bombshell study yesterday confirming the existence of water-rich atmospheres on many of those planets even when they are so assaulted by their stars. This has serious implications for water worlds under less brutal conditions, meaning scientists' imaginations of their water loss over time are likely overblown. Now folks, we come back to 2019 for one of the four or five most important papers of the last decade. This was one where they realized that the Tibetan ice caps were not older than half a million years, but rather could have an upper limit of age as little as 15,000 years, and as an upper limit, that means it's possibly younger. These dating techniques that they've been using in the past are absurd. Like that example of a crater in Australia redated from over 300,000 years old to about half or less than that. Today we climb a step higher and the world will have to come to terms with the fact that Greenland has melted off entirely at least once in the recent geologic past. They say the last million years and potentially much closer to now even. It was discovered in an old ice core from Project Iceworm a secret military operation that included underground bases in Greenland. They had lost and forgotten about the deep coring for decades. But while they take the position that this new data means Greenland must be more vulnerable to climate change, in reality, this is a nod to what we've been saying for a while. Their dating methods are way off. And beyond that, yes folks, the world turns over. And while there is evidence that it isn't enough to fully melt the polar caps each tilt, it would be in some of them. Being at the equator will do that. A forest in Greenland with no human pollution and a toss back to ice. Folks, this is of course a key point supporting the premise of our latest book, The Next End of the World. The PDF is available today and I want to thank everyone who has a hard copy and has left a little review in the comment sections the last few weeks. Thank you so much for your kind words. This is not like the solar terrestrial physics textbook. It really is meant for you. Meant to be able to be read and understood rapidly while serving as a constant reference as new observations come in. The PDF is available with everything else at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.